Uh, thanks for the invitation to um, present about our work in this area. And I want to say uh, good morning to all of the audience from sunny Arizona. It's 75 degrees outside, so we are enjoying very good weather. And um, this is the this is the setting. This is the context for, from where we do our work uh, in Arizona. So you see the title there, and as Sean uh, pointed out, this is part one. This is uh, only the, dedicated to the uh, mechanical and electronic components, and data analysis will be presented a week from, from today. So um, I want to recognize uh, people that are important in, in all this work that we do, and um, our partnership with uh, USDA, ARS, and the Arid Land Agricultural Research Center, ALARC, in Maricopa, Arizona. Mike Gore, now with uh, uh, Cornell University. Jeff White, Andy French, Kelly Thorpe, and Bob Strand. It's, uh, this is a team effort, and I will emphasize this in different, different uh, times of my presentation, that we work in, in collaboration. That's when we get uh, the strongest um, uh, and the best output of our work. We divided our presentation in, in three main parts. Um, part number one will be uh, platform development from the mechanical uh, standpoint, just a description of, of those mechanical components. I'll speak about the field uh, vehicle and, and things related to the motion of the vehicle inside the, the field. And I'll describe about the sensor frame that we use uh, to collect data continuously. Then. I'll, in part number two, I'll be a little more specific on electronic components and from the hardware perspective. So plant sensors is, is a big one and GPS uh, is an important component of, of our work. So I'll, I'll, I'll spend enough time um, talking about uh, GPS. Third part will be handled by John Hewn. This is about data collection from the hardware and software uh, perspective. And uh, his, his talk is, is, is gonna be focused on system integration. So before I move to the next slide, I wanna say that we thought about this presentation and the materials that we have uh, to deliver to a, a non-engineering audience. That's, that's our challenge, that's, that's our objective. Um, but once in a while, it's just, uh, uh, important that we, we, are, we are specific in what we're talking. So if there are questions, uh, let us know. You can contact us and we can answer perhaps at the end of the, uh, of the seminar today. So our objective really goes on, on sharing some of the experiences and tricks, if you, if you will, uh, that we have learned over the last three to four years of collaborative work. So we want to share this information with people. We want to, to present cases of flexibility in design and functionality of system integration. Those two are our key phrases in our work, flexibility and functionality. All right, so to set the context in a, a image form, this is what we're talking about. This is a, a, a field-ready system that we developed here in Arizona for continuous plant data acquisition. So like you see in that case, that picture, there's a driver moving this vehicle through the field. And in the front, there are um, sensors and, and all kinds of instrumentation mounted. So we're gonna be describing uh, what you see there uh, in this picture. And we're gonna also be describing the operational side from the software perspective. Okay, so let me start with um, a general description of a cl high clearance uh, vehicle. I listed eight um, key features of high clearance vehicles. So first thing to, to mention before I go into those points is that this, this, uh, this vehicle has been designed as a sprayer. That's, that's the function that it has uh, in, in commercial uh, fields we have modified uh, this, this type of vehicles to, to, to do this function of high throughput phenotyping uh, in, the, in, in the field. So going to the list of key features, I'm, I'll list the number one, uh, 
the front and back um, frames. You know, in in sprayers, we call those those frames we call them booms. That's the that's the term used to describe those. So either I say frame or boom, I'm talking about the number one in the picture in the left in, in the left side of the picture. That's the that's the frame that moves up and down, carrying instrumentation through the field. Those machines commonly come uh, with hydrostatic transmissions. They're they're good good. Um, characteristics of, of that type of transmissions. We can set our speeds uh, constant with, uh, with a constant flow of, of, of uh, hydraulic uh, fluid. This articulated steering, so these machines um, turn by, by articulating in the middle of the, of the machine, so we can do um, turns in, in a reduced uh, amount of space. They're diesel engines most of the time, that's number four, and that brings a very solid um, power train for, for, the, for the system. There's hydraulic power available in case we need to, uh, to provide power for, a, for any actuator to move up and down or sideways. There's also supply of DC power, uh, which comes handy when we want to uh, provide, the, uh, we need to provide power for all the electronic systems. We only need to be concerned about uh, regulating power and protecting pr the uh, the instrumentation from overload electrical charge. And as you see, mechanically, these are very hefty units. And as far as carrying instrumentation through the field, we have an ample payload capacity. So we're not limited uh, by the weight of the, of the instrumentation. That's, that starts to, to see as a difference between um, remote sensing and, and these proximal sensing uh, systems. Number eight says very high center of gravity. So number eight is something uh, kind of special, kind of different, because what, what I'm trying to convey here with number eight is that these units, as they are so, uh, the frame is, is so much high, elevated from the ground level, the physical and mechanical aspect of these machines makes them um, makes them more unstable as you compare it with another vehicle that may be closer to the ground. Okay, so the centrif centrifugal forces acting on the axles, if, if these machines are not well operated, um, there can be potential consequences uh, in, in, in overturns or side turns of, of these machines. So before I get into more description of these units, I, I just dedicated this particular slide to mention about preventing side overturns with these machines. So we are very keen on safe operation of farm equipment. And this is, this is one good case that we, we, we are developing guidelines and, and, and uh, we want to make sure that if you get one of these units to operate in your fields, you do it consciously with enough uh, attention to the detail of safety. And the first point is that there, there's regulation. There's the OSHC uh, Act from 1970, I believe. So rollover protection units are required. If, if they're not put in, in these units, actually it's against the law. Uh, you need seat belts. Seat belts in combination with uh, rollover protections is, is a good thing to have. The third point it's, uh, is, the, is, is one that we, um, we have different takes to it. It's a qualified operator. And the, uh, the point here is that you probably want a good operator to move this machine through the field and, and, and be comfortable moving this machine. But at the same time, perhaps that person is not qualified from the electronic, um, on, the, on the use of electronics. So you need to find a balance. You need to find a way where you have a, a, a good operator that knows uh, what, what he or she is doing in the field, but also that can operate the, the, the control systems in the vehicle. Frequent inspection of tires and frame integrity, 
pay attention to the field conditions and, and, and the road too. We want even ground conditions. Wheel spacing, avoid uh, high speeds and sharp turns is also a, a good a thing to observe all the time. And, and among all things is if, if this is not in your background, consult with a machinery expert before you start deploying these systems in the field. Okay, now let's go into the material. This is this is our vehicle, the one that we use, and we have uh, implemented this vehicle in many different settings. So th the main feature that I want to bring with this picture is the front boom, which we also see a, another boom in the back. And you can see how those frames can move up and down. We uh, favor the use of the of the front boom because when we put instrumentation on that boom, the forward placement of the sensors uh, minimize plant disruption. So in other words, we collect data on those uh, on on plant conditions before the rest of the vehicle reaches those those plants. So we have uh, we minimize disruption by using that approach. Now, those booms can move up and down. And so we have vertical position adjustments possible. And one thing to see here as I move from slide back and forth is that the whole frame moves up and down. All of the sensors and everything that is attached to, to this uh, frame will move uh, all in, in one uh, in one motion. That's not always the desired situation. So let me now move into uh, frame adjustments that we have implemented in these booms. So I'm calling this sensor mounting using, culti uh, using cultivation tooling. So the, 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 the components that I'm that I'm um, highlighting here. Number one is is the use of two and a quarter agricultural diamond diamond bar, because with those bars you can then use clamps and shanks that are used for cultivation operations in in the field, and and they fit really well with these with these bars. So number one is um, is a square um, bar of uh, two and a quarter inch on the side. Number two is uh, clamps. That we can attach to these to these bars, and those clamps will have set bolts, and those set bolts, which you see in the in the point of number two, are there to fix the position of the of the shanks, either round or flat shanks. So with these adjustments, what we gain is is individual control of vertical and horizontal position of individual sensors. So let me let me demonstrate this to you. We have this uh, sensor that is um, it, this is a housing for a for an ultrasonic sen ultrasound sensor uh, for displacement measurements. And what I can do now is I set the bolts to a given position so I can move up and down, and the rest of the frame remains in the in the same position. So that's one type of adjustment that I can gain with cultivation tooling. Now, another, another type of adjustment is front to back. So I can have this sensor moving uh, front to the front and to the back. Again, and the rest of the components remain uh, in, in the right position. Now, another adjustment that we can have with this, with this uh, hardware is horizontal adjustment in the rotation side. So we see how this sensor, we can set it to um, whatever angle we want to. Again, all independent of the, of the rest. Also, we have sideways adjustment on that, on that frame. So we can move this, 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 um, this sensor to any position that we want uh, in that frame using the, the, set, the set bolts and, and the clamps at the bottom. 